Welcome. In this video, you'll learn about Web Channel. This channel allows you to display personalized content on your website using all the customer information available in your SAP Amarsys database, including real time session data and historical CRM data. Web Channel offers different types of web campaigns. The embedded campaign replaces a selected element on your website with your personalized message. The overlay campaign appears above your normal website content so you can drive retention or turn your anonymous visitors into loyal customers. And if you want to be more discreet with the browsing experience, use a ribbon campaign. It's displayed at the top or bottom of the page and can inform your visitor of updates such as changes to your terms and conditions, delivery times, or ongoing offers. Here is our use case. James is visiting your website but he's about to leave with an empty cart and without making a purchase. Using an abandoned browse overlay campaign, you can incentivize James and visitors like him to purchase before they leave. Similar to block-based emails, web campaigns are based on content blocks. Before creating a new web campaign, let's check how to manage them. Immarsys provides pre-built blocks that you can copy and then customize. You can also create new ones from scratch or contact Amarsis to request tailor-made, brand-specific blocks from the professional services team. Once you have a block, you can edit, copy, preview, archive, or delete it. Use the search, block type, and status filters to find what you need. You can also change views, and see archived or deleted blocks. I want to create an overlay campaign later, so I copy and edit this pre-built block. On the settings, I rename it and add a description. I move to the HTML tab. Here I can edit the source of the campaign and insert predefined elements. To see the code better, I can expand this editor. I don't change the code here because I will modify the image and the text in the campaign. So I move to the next tab, Variables. These are the editable and predefined elements in the block. I can create, edit, copy, or delete them. I'd like to change the default setting of this variable. I click Edit and modify the default value. Now the Styles tab where you can style your HTML elements by using CSS, followed by the JavaScript tab to add additional functions to your blocks, for example, button interactions. And on the Edit History tab, you can preview and restore previous versions. Finally, I check the Mobile Preview. I'm done editing this block, so I click here. Now that my block is set up as I want it, let's create the campaign. To do this, I go to Channels, Web Channel, Campaigns. Please note that for the time being, the old Web Channel campaign creation flow is still available, but it will be removed soon. Thus, we recommend using the new block based campaign creation flow only. I create a block based campaign. The type defines the available placement settings in the content editor. I choose the overlay type. On the campaign settings page, I name the campaign and choose the domain to display it on. If you have multiple websites, you add them on the Domains tab by adding extra URLs where WebExtend is implemented. Here you can also remove your obsolete domains. The recipient source defines your target audience. In this case, I want to use this campaign in a program that I created earlier. On the Placement step, you can define where your web channel campaign is displayed on all pages, or category, product details, search results, or post-purchase pages only. For my use case, I select all pages. You can navigate on a preview of your website and select the desktop or mobile views. You can see the path to the page you're on or paste the specific one to check if they're included in your selected option. The steps to create an embedded campaign are very similar to what I've just shown you. So I'll just mention the main differences. For embedded campaigns, 
you need to define the section of your website where you want to show them. Here, you can set a zone manually or select one you previously created on the Zones tab. You just need to select the domain, click Pick a Zone Manually, click on the zone, and name it. Back to our abandoned browse overlay campaign. In the content step, you can select from your pre-created blocks and edit the content in the live editor. I change this image modify the content, and edit the link of the button. Then, in the Variables Editor, I change the color of the button. Now, let's talk about personalization. This web campaign will be in an Interactions program, so this option is disabled. But if your recipient source is set to Automation Center or Segment, for example, for a birthday web campaign, you just drag and drop any predefined or custom tokens, like in every other channel. In case of embedded or ribbon campaigns, a Settings tab is also available. In embedded campaigns, you can replace or insert your campaign before or after the zone you selected. You can set your ribbon to follow the scrolling of the visitors, or if you prefer, it can be fixed at the top or at the bottom of your website. Next is the session filters. They allow for more precise targeting. I enable the Stop Targeting After Click filter as I don't want to show it to customers who have already clicked on the campaign. On the Trigger and Scheduling page, you can define how often you want your visitors to see your campaign. I choose once every user session. The display trigger is only available for overlay campaigns. You can decide if you want to allow the user to browse for a few seconds before showing the campaign or show them only when they show intent to leave. I pick this option. Finally, I schedule the dates for my campaign to run and activate it. You can always deactivate and modify it later if needed. Back to the Campaigns tab, you can set your campaign's priority, one being the highest. Priority determines which campaign is displayed for visitors who are targeted by more than one campaign, preventing overlapping. On this page, you can also manage your existing campaigns. Now I navigate to Automation Programs and edit my program. I select the Activated Web Campaign on the Add, then on the Remove Nodes. and I activate the program. Measuring performance is key, so let's check the web channel reporting pages. On the Dashboard tab, you can track the overall impressions and clicks, as well as see the active campaigns with their current metrics and recent activity. From the Campaigns tab, you can access campaign-level reporting by clicking on this icon. First, select a time frame to see the total number of impressions and clicks. The line chart displays desktop impressions and clicks in addition to signups. If you hover over the graph, you can see the daily figures. And that's how web channel works. I hope that you enjoyed this session and thank you for your attention.